Hello once again everyone, my name is Larry Laux, SC here at Vision Core. In our last video we talked about what virtualization is and how it impacts the architecture of the Intel server environment. In this section we want to take a look at how virtualization changes system administration. Now what I've seen happen many times in my six years focused in this sector of the IT industry is companies will try out virtualization. They'll hear all the hype in the industry, maybe they read a trade mag or, a, or attend a trade show, a webinar. They hear all this hype about virtualization, they'll go out and download some eval copies of VMware, and it's pretty easy to get set up at a basic level to install some ESX servers into install virtual center. And the next thing you know, we got the green light to virtualize and a new DR project and all these kind of things. And then what oftentimes happens is companies, they'll virtualize the easy stuff first, no problems there, but they start to virtualize critical systems once they get comfortable with the virtualization uh, environment and that's where they start to have problems. And what a lot of times they never realized along the way is that virtualization radically changes the way that we manage our networks. It also radically changes the way that we troubleshoot the environment. So <clears throat> as we look at the traditional server model, once again, we have you know, hardware out there with a single operating system installed, applications and services on top of that. And troubleshooting this model is a fairly straightforward process because we always only have, in the non-virtualized space, we always only have a single operating system on a single box. So you come into the office one day, the help desk phone rings, and your SQL server is having some problems. Well, there's four key indicators of health with a server environment. Of course, we have CPU utilization. Is that maxed out, right? Uh, disk I.O. And, and disk space, are those maxed out? Is there plenty there? How are those being used? And then, of course, we have memory utilization and network as well. And so we can look at those uh, given a trouble call or given a, a crisis situation in the environment and determine, do we have enough of these on this server? And, of course, if we you know, get that help desk call and we look at the server and we see the CPUs pegged at 100% utilization, well, that's an obvious indicator of a problem. Maybe we need to add some more processors, get a bigger box if, uh, if the application is multi-threaded. Of course, if we're out of memory, we can add additional memory, right? And so that's a fairly straightforward process. Now, as we look at the non-virtual servers, if all of these look okay, then typically we'll go from there and start troubleshooting the application layer, right? Maybe we have a spyware on the client side PC. It's slowing the boxes down. There's really no problem on the server. It's actually a client issue. Or maybe back on the back end, there's something wrong with the server. Maybe a service pack or an update will fix. So that's kind of the troubleshooting process in a non-virtual space. Now, let's take a moment here, virtualize really quickly, and see how that changes once we're virtualized. So now we've virtualized, and let's take a look at how this impacts troubleshooting and maintaining the environment. So after we virtualize, we have our servers, our hardware-based servers down here. We have multiple virtual machines. These, these VMs here are all running on this particular server, and then we have some virtual machines over here, of course, that are running on this box. And so now instead of having the simplicity of one operating system per X amount of resources, well, we might have, you know, 10, 15, 20 VMs, any number of virtual machines on this particular server that is sharing those resources in different ways. So for example, processor. Well, think about it. If I have a dual socket quad core server, I have eight cores. If I have 20 VMs on that box at one time, it kind of makes sense that we don't have all those VMs running at the same time. The VMs are moved onto processor, taken back off of processor, placed back onto processor, and so on. It all happens very quickly, and we're going to have some subsequent videos to show you how this works in more detail. But suffice to say, for now, that we're playing a really fast game of time division multiplexing with processor utilization. So now when the help desk phone rings and you have a virtual machine that is performing poorly, it's not quite the same as it was in a non-virtual space, it's just going and looking at the box. I might have 30 VMs out here, this one is having a problem. The server's at relatively low utilization levels as far as processor goes by looking inside the VM, and the VM thinks it's at 100% utilization. What's causing that? And this is the kind of stuff, guys, that causes problems all the time uh, where environments, they, they haven't taken the time to really understand the virtual space and this new infrastructure and how it works with your hardware. So we'll help you with that here. Now, memory. Again, in the old non-virtual space, right? You have a server there. You have 4 gigs of RAM in it. The OS and applications have access to that 4 gigs of RAM. Of course, that has to change here. If I've got 32 gigs of RAM on this server, I've got 30 virtual machines on it. Well, obviously, we're sharing portions of RAM across all those virtual machines. So the questions come up. You know, how much RAM do we give a virtual machine? This is up to you now as administrator to make these assignments because we're no longer limited by what's available in the hardware. Now we have to decide, how much RAM do I give the virtual machine? I have 32 gigs of RAM here. How much should I assign to this one? And then after you've made that assignment, you need the ability to go back and look and see, was that accurate? You know, if you assign four gigs of RAM to a VM, one of three things is going to happen. You're going to guess high, you're going to get it about right, or you're going to guess low. And so we need to go back after the fact and look at the environment and find out, did we make accurate guesses? 
uh, looking at the network. So again, in the non-virtual space, we have a gigabit NIC inside of a physical box. That operating system and applications can take advantage of that gigabit NIC. Now, of course, again, very seldom is a server that will max out a full gigabit NIC. There are a few out there, but not many. Um, when we suddenly take an ESX box and put 20 or 30 virtual machines on it, you can definitely max out a gigabit NIC. Fortunately, ESX gives us some very easy ways to add additional network cards and have load balance and failover, and we can do some creative things to tweak that. Now, looking at disk, once again, the non-virtual space, we're limited by what's there. So if I have a mirrored set of 146 gig drives, that operating system and applications, can use up to but not to exceed that, and that's a fairly straightforward process. Of course, if that operating system and applications only need 30 gigs, I've got a lot of wasted space out there and there's nothing I can do about that either. So once we virtualize, it's up to us as administrators to assign amounts of disk space. We're no longer limited by some amount that's in the hardware box. And so we have a virtual machine out here. How much disk space do we give it? Well, you know, we don't really know how much data we're gonna get in the next couple of years. We don't know how many service packs and security uh, fixes are gonna come out. And so we have to guess, and fortunately at Vision Core we have tools that can help you with that, that we can apply some science to that and show you exactly how much and add some automation there as well. But the disk space management becomes completely different. Now we typically we use back-end storage, have multiple virtual machines riding on that back-end storage, and so if we're having disk I.O. issues, you know, I may have 20 VMs out here that are sharing a single HBA inside of a server. So this gives you kind of an introduction to how virtualization changes system administration. Now what we're going to do in the follow-up videos to this is we're going to talk about some of these different areas and give you some technical specifics and we're going to provide some understanding as far as how these things change in a virtual environment and give you some tips on how you can better manage it.